Hey, the game. <laughs> that was awesome. How about you, that? Do you need now? a professional to step in and do yeah, this for just, you? Roll with that. You guys have got it. <laughs> hey, guys. How's it going? Welcome to the Half Ass Sportscast. I'm Ryan Falker, a quarter of the Half Ass Sportscast. And alongside me tonight, stepping in for Mark, my friend Bono. Hi, everybody. I'm the Reverend Ryan Bono from TV's You Can't Breathe It on Television. I guess it's not TV's, is it? No, it's really not. It's, it's from, from the Lone Stars You Can't Breathe It on Television. Uh, yes. yes. Totally. His, his lack of professionalism is rubbing off on me. I, I can't even say anything. And trust me, I do it like once a show, dude. <laughs> nice. Nice. I like to be consistent, if nothing else. So Mark can't make it tonight, so I'm going to fill in. Hopefully I can Hopefully, I can step in a little bit here. and um, We've got... a. A show tonight. We're going to talk about Ryan's bad date. Awesome. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I, I'm going to be hearing it for the first time while you're hearing about it for the first time. I'm really looking forward to that. I, I think that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, we're really looking forward to oh, that. Oh, you're wrong. wrong. I am. We might talk some Rangers. It's <laughs> the, the December meetings just got over here a couple weeks ago. The, the lot big Rangers news. You, Darvish, and uh, your feet, Tori Alba, punching out an ump. We're going to talk about that. So... First, I want to say that we are going to get to that, and that is very important. But also, I really wanted to talk about the Mavericks. Uh, we will go and talk about the Mavericks. Well, we'll go into detail a little bit more, um, especially since the details are really depressing. Uh, here in about 20 minutes or 30 minutes, they will be playing the Oklahoma City Thunder, trying to get their first victory. They're 0 and 2 right now. Bl- both losses, blowouts uh, against the Denver Nuggets, the unsuspecting Denver Nuggets, and the Miami Heat. Now, that Miami Heat game we'll talk about when we talk about it, but it was the game was negligible, but most of the excitement and the action for me was definitely before the game. So, with the banner raising. Oh, there it is right there. Boom, in your face. So In the face. Dude, dude Oklahoma City's playing Memphis tonight. What? I, I kind of thought that was wrong. That is wrong. <laughs> don't, don't question me. No, no. No, Oklahoma City is definitely playing Memphis tonight. Dallas isn't playing. What? They get two days off or one day off? Must have two days off. Go to the next day, Wednesday, December twenty eighth. This is awesome. While he looks that up, I will sit here and vamp. Regardless, the uh, we'll we'll cover it in more detail, and we'll cover we'll cover how the uh, league's forming out so far. Uh, there's a lot of interesting storylines. Uh, Man, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm very excited to talk NBA, but we're not going to do that yet. Tonight, we're going to focus on our core competencies. Seeing how Reverend Ryan is here, we I are going to talk baseball because how can you say Ryan without saying baseball? That's a good question. Dallas is at Oklahoma City tomorrow night, Thursday, summer 29th at 7 p.m. So they Central. had two days off. They had two days off. My mistake. That's all right, man. That's all right. We, we all mess up sometimes. All right, so where, where do you want to start? Uh, Dude, let's start. We'll start with Rangers. Let's start with the obvious. Let's start with you, Darvish, man. What do you uh, I, think about that? <laughs> well, that cheap? First, Thanks, first let's bring, let's bring up, let's discuss what happened. Because some, some people out there might, might not know about the posting, how, how the posting works, and all of that. So let's... Man, I, I had his, I, I had his list of of pitches pulled up, and then I, I lost. The, he, I think he was throwing an average of one forty something, right? He throws a lot of pitches. He goes really deep into games. And of course, we're talking about uh, the Japanese pitcher from the Nippon Ham Fighters, uh, Yu Darvish, who the Texas Rangers won the bid on over the Toronto Blue Jays, who were who were who were projected to get to win the bidding. Yeah, they they really were projected to win, and and the Rangers have. Just put what fifty one point nine million dollars, almost fifty two. That's more than Dice K. Yeah, it was, it was it was a little bit more than Dice K, and that that doesn't even win them the pitcher. That just wins them the right to sit in a room with the pitcher. It's like EPL rules in soccer over yeah. there. And, and so now the Rangers are negotiating with you, Darvish, and and they're trying to come up with with a contract that's going to work for him. What, and, do you, what do you think that thing? What do you think that number is going to be? I can't see it being less than 20 a year. How many years? The guy's 20, 25 or 27. And, and you know, that that might be where the Rangers decided to go ahead and, and give him a lot of money is because he is so young. He is young. That they figured that they'd just give him a, a really long contract. Although you do know that they use smaller baseballs over there. I, I did not know that. They use smaller baseballs, and they don't face the major league players, quote-unquote, of the – Japanese league every day over there. Okay. 
So that's one of the things that's, that that, that's an were... interesting difference. Here's here's some big differences though between U Darvish and Dice K. I, I really think U Darvish is worth a lot of money. Uh, Fifty two million just to sit in a room with him. Nah, I'm not so sure. But he, he's a big guy. He, he's what, like six five? Yeah, he's very tall he, he's, for an Asian player. Yeah, he, he's a big dude. Most of the Asian pitchers that have come over here have been have been shorter guys, and and they've worn down really fast. Haven't been able to throw as fast. And, and most of them have really relied on one or two pitches. You Darvish throws five consistent. Hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six pitches. He can consistently get over the plate. He's got a ninety to ninety six mile an hour four seam fastball. Okay. A 90 to 93 mile an hour two seam fastball, which is a shooto fastball. And, and what a shooto is, it, throwing as a right hander, it actually breaks down and towards a right handed batter, mm-hmm. which is highly irregular. Nor- normally you throw a breaking pitch and it breaks away from the pit, from the, the throwing arm. This pitch actually breaks toward the throwing arm. I thought you were going to tell me that once it gets over the plate, it commits Harry Carey. And no, that, that is his next pitch, which <laughs> is the 90 to 92 mile an hour. Harry Carey cutter. <laughs> uh, it, Hi, I'm a <laughs> <laughs> different, different Harry Carey, different Harry Carey. Uh, he's got an 85-mile-an-hour slider that breaks horizontally. Yeah, it, it doesn't slide down. down it, slides it slides perfectly horizontally. Okay, now hold on. Okay, let me stop you right there. You're, leading, you're reading off these, the list of these pitches, and we've heard this before. We've heard we heard a lot of the same rhetoric with Dice K's we, gyro we did, ball. We, we did hear a lot of that same. But see, with with Dice K, it was just the one pitch. They just kept going on about this one pitch, the gyro ball, and it turned out that that thing was made. Actually, do you remember CJ Wilson claiming he could throw a gyro ball? I remember him when he first got here. Some some saying like that. Yeah, it was only because Dice K said he. Could yeah, do exactly. It. He was like, "Oh yeah, I've been working on this." He's same such a thing. douche. He's like, "Yeah, you know, I was I was working on gyro I, ball too." I, I can know, do that. Man. I, mean, you know, I, I just didn't want to show Dice K up because he's trying to get his money. You know, I just I'm, didn't I'm want to CJ, do that. I can do that. Fucking douche. <laughs> God. Um, no, but I also, you know, when I heard that stat, because, you know, I'm surprised people haven't been bringing that up, that the fact that they use a smaller ball, those pitches. See, I, I, I was unaware of that. Those pitches are easier to throw with a smaller ball. And and that, that too, might explain the success of a guy like Dice K, who's a shorter guy, he's going to have a smaller frame, smaller hand. Where you Darvish should be able to pitch with a taller guy, he, yeah, taller guy, bigger, bigger hands. hands. He should be able to get those pitches over the plate using an American baseball. Now that being said, um, I think John Daniels and crew have enough in the bank for us to trust them. They had, they had a guy over there for every single one of his starts last year. Every no, single I, I was one. unaware of that. They had a guy over there for every single one of his starts. So, I mean, yeah. You, I, I I said all those things I said, but still, you have to trust that those guys over there were were honking down on him and making sure that they took every single tiny little itty bitty teeny weeny note they possibly could, and they were doing their 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 due diligence and got their best judgment through the organization and said that we do need to in fact go get this guy regardless of all these variables that could prove to be detrimental in the majors. So so they did their homework. Yeah, and I, and, I, 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 they and, that, and that's important. I think they and get, that. That, that means that they're serious about this. And, you know, I imagine Boston did its homework before dropping a whole lot of money on Dice K, but, but you never know. But that was also the first time that's ever happened, wasn't it? Yes, I, I believe so. Ichiro didn't post like that, did he? I believe Ichiro did post. Did he? No, I, there's something I've got a Japanese baseball Ichiro. question. Do they Hello. have... Do they have... Hello, uh, it's El Richa. <laughs> <laughs> do they have, uh, like, women's softball over there? Uh, I don't think women can do anything over there except like <laughs> no. You're you're thinking well, of China. They'll have like they'll uh, have like the oversized ball, which would just be a normal baseball, right? So. <laughs> I mean, how would they see the ball, Rich? I mean, come on, why don't you say that oh. next? Jeez, that's very very <laughs> insensitive. That's kind of racist. <laughs> I, I don't know if you realize that just now. Why would you say that, Rich? I mean, I, that's what you were insinuating. I was just projecting what you were trying to get across. You're a bad man, Rich. I, I don't. I don't even know why. You know what? Let's just stop talking to Rich. Yeah, let's, you know where you know where he's coming just, from. Let's just do our show and, and not worry about the racist in the room. <laughs> God, can you believe this guy? <laughs> it's not so cool. you got to team up on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are drinking. We are drinking. That's, that's what we Irish do when that's we what, drink. That's what comes next. <laughs> so I, I'm. I for one, I've, I've read a lot about you, Darvish. 
and I wasn't sold at first. I, I was I was not very excited. And of course, once the Rangers won the bidding, the U Darvish hype machine really started to kick in, and they started telling us all the reasons why we need him here in Texas. And, and I have read that, and I have fallen prey to that. I'll admit, but the hype machine is doing its job because the the guy seems the guy seems like he's top notch, and he's he's young. Now, that's what gets me. He's so young. He's about two or three years younger than Daisuke was, and I, I think so. There, there's something weird about uh, about Ichiro and, and Seattle. Like uh, a good buddy of mine lives there in Seattle, and, and he was telling me the whole story one time. I'll have to get it and, and come prepared next time. Uh, Ichiro is somehow tied to Seattle. I, I think that the guy that I think the owner of Seattle owns Ichiro's former team in Japan, mm-hmm. and so he was able to just move him over without posting. You sure it wasn't that he heard the Cubans were floating over in tires, so that's what he, he did. did. He, he did hear about <laughs> he, that. He gets halfway there. He's like, man, this is a crock of S. <laughs> well, they, they've got they've got a much longer trip. <laughs> M- much longer trip. Uh, speaking of Cubans, let, let's let's no! go ahead. Let's go ahead and change the the subject. Well, hold on here. before before we get into that. I know what you're going to, but I want to say uh, as far as off season moves with Rangers, uh, there was really two concerns. Basically, you, who are you going to get to fulfill your pitching, and what are other moves are you going to make? Vis-a-vis, I'm talking about what's the deal with Prince Fielder? Like, yeah, let's let's definitely talk about Prince the Rangers, Fielder because the something's Rangers going could, on there. The Rangers could use a first baseman, and that's um, that's what I was really hoping they would get this whole time. I I, I was I was on the Prince Fielder bandwagon. Like, if so. you're look, if you're going to move Neftali Feliz to the rotation, you're taking away your closer. You got Ding Dong, what's his name? Joe, Joe Nathan. Nathan. Joe Nathan to come in. You you could argue and look, John Daniels and this or, uh, the Rangers organization has tried to sell us. Far worse, like like Harden, Rich Harden Rich coming Harden, in as yeah. being your ace. Then I think that Neptali Feliz coming in and fulfilling out the rotation, I would not have argued with him going out and getting Prince Fielder. That being said, I do not know why Prince Fielder is not signed. That that's a really good question. I mean, he really is taking his sweet time. You know, I I don't. I suspect that what it boils down to is nobody's offering him the money that he wants because he he feels that he's equal to Albert Pujols. And he feels he should get Pujols money. But the reason Pujols went to L.A. is because they're the only people stupid enough to give him that kind of money. It's like saying everybody that got contracts near the Aderod got a contract should have got a $250 million contract. Right, and then that's just not, that's just not logical. I mean, it's just not practical. And so I, I personally think, and I've read this in a few places on, on various rumor websites and things like that, that Prince Fielder is holding out for Albert Pujols money. He's just not going to get it. He's too- and, and it's not because he's not worth it. I, I think he's worth more than Albert Pujols because he's younger. But he's just not going to get it because there's no teams out there with deep enough pockets. I think ultimately he is going to end up with the Cubs. He is going to get an 8- to 10-year deal, and it's going to be close to what Pujols is making per year. But but not, it, he's not going to be getting the 25.4 or whatever. Get I don't think he's going to get 8 years. You don't think? I think he's going to get eight, eight years, 160, 180, something like that. Well, he might ask for it, but I think the later later, the hour gets, closer to the season. Well, that's true, and, and if he does end up with an NL club, he's not going to get more than six or seven years. Because an, an AL club is able to offer a guy like that a longer contract. Because of the DH. Because of the DH. And an NL club just can't offer him that kind of deal. But, I mean, you, you, look, you look at what Anaheim did. And I'm not so sure it's a great idea. Eight years from now, dude, there's no way. Al- Albert Pools is going to be on the doorstep of his 40th birthday. There's no way in hell he's going to be playing no. top notch. I, I don't know. And there, th- he's going to be on the doorstep of his 40th birthday, and he's going to have two years left on his contract. Yeah, that's that's insane. That was stupid. That was just as dumb as the as Tom Hicks signing a Rod, outbidding everybody I, I, by a hundred million dollars. I think though, I think that was dumber. And it was, it was clearly reactionary to what happened. I mean, here, here we are ten. Here we are ten years almost to the day, like ten years and a few weeks after the Arod deal. Arod's still playing at a high level. Yeah, he, he's what thirty seven, something like that. So he's you know, he, yeah, he, he, yeah, he's in his late thirties, but but he's not. Albert Pujols is going to be in his early forties by the time his contract is done. And Pujols has a lot more. Um, let's just say weight thrown around. Yeah. Uh, he's got, uh, that's a that's a big truck, dude, and that that big truck takes a lot a uh, lot more a lot more wear and tear. And I tell you what, I would not be surprised when this is all said and done. That guy doesn't get Papa Roy somehow. Oh, yeah, 
Hey, if anybody's on, if anybody in MLB is on roids, it's that guy. I mean, it was like a Rod's the last pure guy, and then after that happened, it was just it's got it, Pujols held the the last bastion of hope of of cleanliness and pureness torch, and I, I don't believe it. The dude is freaking look at him. His his forearms are like the size of my car. Well, like then, I mean, the, the guy's ridiculous. Well, another oh, trade fair, you drive the it shaving up the head. Oh, the guys who shave their heads are definitely on You know rides. why they do that? It's because their head gets bigger, and they don't want their the obvious like fact or, or number of their cap size to give away the fact that their head's grown. Yeah. So with the hair, it's what? a little bit bigger, but with, but with no hair, they can keep the same, no, the same I, hat I, size. No, I, I definitely I, – I know that. That's what Bonds did. For, that, well, I know that firsthand because when I shaved my head, uh, my hat size went down by a quarter of a point. That's why they do that, and you know, very. You're gonna say I it was cover for your roid usage. Yes. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I'm living proof. I mean, look at him; he's just a uh, <laughs> he's an Adonis. Beefcake, beefcake, beefcake. All right, all right, beefcake. Why don't you tell us about Tori Alba? Tori Alba, your Tori Alba was playing in the Venezuelan league. The catcher for the backup catcher Catch, for the Rangers. Backup, yeah, backup catcher. They they still claim that he's going to be sharing time with Mike Napoli this season. We'll get to that here in a couple minutes. Hell no, dog. But but m- most importantly, your Tori Alba was playing in the Venezuelan league. He's got pissed off about a call and punched an ump in the face. <laughs> well, what else are you going to do, man? He well, it's it's Venezuela. I mean, it's basically lawless. Oh yeah, he could probably get away with it too. Yeah. Right? Well, he he probably would have been an insult if he didn't after. punch him in the face. <laughs> yes, he, he mean, probably he probably kidnapped the ump after the game. He did that and made him snort some coke. No, that's Colombia. No, oh. in um, Colombia, so, it's got real. <laughs> so, so let's talk about your Vitori Alba for a second, and, and let's talk about his value as a Texas Ranger, because I think that his value significantly diminished over the course of last season, as we found out that Mike Napoli was not the damaged goods we were led to believe when he was coming out of Anaheim. Oh, no. a- coming out of Anaheim, we were led to believe that he was a subpar defensive catcher who-, who can hit the ball pretty well, but he can't call a game, he can't throw anybody out. That is what we were getting out of Anaheim. It turned out that Sosha just didn't like the guy. You know, that's probably why the guy or their GM quit, got fired after that. Probably. Because he let... Uh, I'm not sure if it was obvious. Who knows if it was obvious? The guy was back up. We wouldn't see any time. We take him. Uh, obviously, uh, our scouts, they're not – coming from the Angels, they're not going to give us any hints. Um, so no. whenever – if they let him go to us, they certainly didn't think he was going to hurt them in any way in the division. And they couldn't – Well, they, they, didn't know, they didn't know he was coming to us. No, they didn't? They traded him to Toronto. Oh, that's right. We, we and nabbed then, him from Toronto. Yeah, yeah because, because Toronto wanted Frankie Francisco, and we said, well – you don't have anybody we would like, but if you can somehow get Napoli, we'll give you Francisco for Napoli. So they sent Vernon Wells to Anaheim for Napoli, and then we like. Then I don't. I it was think, two days. He was there for two days and got traded to Texas. I didn't think it was even that long. It but was yeah, two but days. yeah, he was he was in in Toronto for a very short time before getting traded to Texas, and so he, the, they never would have let him go to a division rival, and, and that's why we couldn't get him from. Him. Yeah, that, we're like, hey man, we're the Texas Rangers. We got a better farm system. That's right. what helps to have a good farm system. Like, look, we'll give you this guy. All right, we we worked him up. We he, you can see what he's done in the majors a little bit with Frankie. It's so like, you want him? We'll get. I mean, and then and, and don't. This is coming off the uh, the Rangers going to the World Series mm-hmm. with um, Benji Molina as their starter. Right. Another like hired gun, a guy that came here that one year. He didn't know what he was going to get. He gets here. He plays here. He does great. Everybody loves him. But then he, he re, what does he retire? I, I, I don't. I think he just didn't get picked up. I don't, I, okay. I, well, he retired. So I, I know. Up. I know. Several weeks into the season, he, he was still looking for work, and just nobody would hire him. And then you know, it, then it comes to we're in the same position again, where we get this. Who's this Napoli guy? I guess yeah, he exactly. Work out. And then he comes out and does this. Hell, I saw a World Series win. With him hitting a jack in a three-run home run to put it out of, put it out of reach. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, exactly. And he, he essentially went from being the, what, almost the third-string catcher? It was like third-string catcher and second-string first baseman. Uh, yeah. To, to having his name chanted by the entire stadium through, like during every single game of the playoffs. That's Yeah, yeah that I mean, exactly. Awesome. It, was, it, it, it really was a, a pretty amazing story. 
so why do is Tori Alba still around? Is my first question because he's drawing a really big paycheck to be the second ba- the second catcher. Well, come on, this is the Rangers. We're, we're known for having eight hundred catchers <laughs> like T Garden, Soft Little Mock. Well, yeah, Laird. we've got we've got Trainer. Tra- oh my God, I forgot about Trainer. Yeah, who is horrible at the plate, by the way. Horrible at the plate, but 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 defensively, he's a really solid catcher. He's got a really hot wife. So, <laughs> oh, he does, doesn't he? Yeah, Miss Misty May Trainer. Yeah, I'll who was one one of the um the the beach volleyball. Yeah. yeah. So you know, as long as she comes to the games, he can strike out every time he goes to the plate. Just so everybody gets to give him. So I I, I think Tori Alba would make really nice trade bait for for a solid reliever, j- just to just to really solidify what what's left of the pen. Wow, how about that for some Rangers talk, huh? Yeah, let's go Rangers talk. Let's hear about your date. Oh, my date. <laughs> date. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And roll credits. Awesome. Nice. All right. All right. We're, 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 first off, where did you where did you meet the unlucky lady? Oh my god! I met her a couple weeks ago at a friend's Christmas party. Okay. Uh, Oh yeah, I remember. You, I remember you telling us about this girl. Yeah, it's you of, showed us some pictures. It's kind of unfortunate because I was really I, I told, excited I about her. She was nuts. Yeah. Well, what? No, this is a different one, dude. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> different, different girl, different, different girl. nuts girl. He's on a hot seat. Uh, nah, she was. I don't know. I met her at a friend's uh, Christmas party, okay. and uh, it was a friend of a friend. It's my friend, and it was her friend. My friend, my friend's her friend, and that was her friend. So you get that? All right. Look, look, I don't care how you met her. What happened? <laughs> All right. So America so, doesn't care. So we go to the date, and this is this is very very degrading for me. By the way, I just wanted to let you know that because look, I mean, look at this mug. I'm not being. I'm not used to women saying no to me. <laughs> if anything, that gives him a switch a swift punch in the face. <laughs> e. Straight joke. I promise. <laughs> oh, it's ladies, don't worry about it. Um, so, okay, so we we go. Uh, we she she vamps for like a couple of weeks. She's like, oh, I'm just too busy. I'm like, yeah, really? So it's like two weeks after we meet. So just like think about the nuances of now dating nowadays and how much texting comes into oh, play. Yeah. But it's like I still when those are the Facebook status, like oh, when yeah, you changed it and that horse ass, and then just like so you, glad I'm not dating. You don't want to like talk too much over the texting because you don't want to sit there. Go, you know, the last thing you want is go to the date and be like, hey, I know everything about you because I like had yeah, your Facebook we, and we, we texted, texted everything. Yeah. So what's up? Yeah, that's great. We you don't want to do that, so I'm like, we're gonna get it on or what? Yeah. At the same time, you're trying to keep that interest level. That should be your test. So, it's like two weeks after this, after I meet her, and it's just like, it's tough. So uh, we go out to the date, and it turns out it's really not so much a date. It's kind of like, hey, we're getting here early, and then my friends are showing up for happy hour, and I was like, you know what? Whatever. I don't care. I don't care. It's two weeks later. I just kind of just don't care. I, I, do, I do care, but I just kind of don't care, just like whatever. Right. So um, I get there, meet her there, and it was all I could do to try to get this girl interested in me. And now I'm talking to an audience that really doesn't want to date me or know me that well, probably, maybe. I don't know. But <laughs> I'll put your number on I the screen, I can usually bro. talk to just about anybody about anything, and you know, I can, I'm not bad at it. But with her, it was everything I could do. I could have told her I jumped out of a spaceship into a pool full of jello and then started juggling right after I came out. And it w- she would have been like, oh, that's great. She never oh. took anything I went anywhere, right? It was tough. So by the time 6 o'clock rolled around and her friends came, I was kind of glad. Not that I didn't want to, like, stop talking to her. Just, were, like, were any of her friends hot? A couple of them. Nice. Um, I like where your head's at. <laughs> I like where your head's at. So I mean, as, long, can, as long as she's going to be useless, you might as well turn it into a positive. Well, one of, one of her friend's uh, boyfriends is uh, Toby Harris' son. I was telling you about. Uh, I, remember I, don't, I, I don't know who Toby Harris is. Toby Hara? Toby Hara. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure if you looked him up, you'd probably be like, oh, that's not. He's a decent baseball career guy. Anyway, oh, okay, okay, okay. I got you. Um, so, anyway, so me and him were talking, you know, plenty. And uh, so we're, we're sitting here at this uh, place for a couple of, for like an hour after they get there till like seven or something. And then they all want to go. And, okay, but oh, I forgot to uh, mention. Uh, when we got there, she was very much wanting to convey how tired she was because she had stayed out till three in the morning. And I was like, what do you say to that? Okay. Uh, cool. 
awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, okay. That sucks. So whenever all her friends – and you know, some of her friends that were there, I met when I met her. So right. I knew them as much as I knew her almost. And we were getting along and you know, we, we talked whenever I met her at the party and everything. So you know, we were kind of just friendly. So it wasn't a big deal talking to them at all. As a matter of fact, I think I talked to them almost as much as I talked to her. So anyway, when they were like, let's go to this other bar. So we go across the street to this other bar. My date didn't think that she wanted to go. She oh, was to- kinda, Toby, you're very 70s. Look at that. Dude, look at that. Look at that stash. Why don't we talk yeah, more about it? Sweet stash. Um, Rich, do a, do a Wikipedia search for Toby Hera and, and get the picture that comes up at the top ready for the end of the broadcast, please. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, this, is, this is great stuff. It, so, so anyway, uh, she ends up, she doesn't know she wants to go to the next place. It's right across the street. She ends up going. Of course I go. Um, we stay there and, uh, you know, we're talking, she's bouncing around and everything and I'm just kind of like playing with it, you know, just like, Hey, you know what? Go, he's your friend, you know, go have fun. So I'm talking to like Toby Harris kid. I'm talking to a couple of the people and, um, she goes to the bathroom or something. And then I'm just sitting there kind of like, <sighs> she just left. <laughs> like the air just <sighs> goes all out of my balloon. And then one of her friends was like, Says something to the effect of, hey, I see you're having... He's like, how's it going with old girl? I'm like, yeah, it's going all right, I guess. You know? She's like, well, let me give you a hint. Just since we've been here, she's asked me a couple of times about you. I'm like, I kind of don't know what that means. I kind of don't want to ask her about it and get into this big dialogue with her friend about it. I'm not in middle school. Right. I'm like, I tell, I simply well, tell her, I was like, this is great, but I, I kind of wish she'd show some interest and actually tell me about it. But... So that happened. So at least I right. know she's interested. Um, so then a little bit more time goes by, and everybody everybody in the group, there's probably about 15 of us, they're like, hey, let's go down to Baker Street. And everybody's like, yeah, Baker Street. Yeah, hey, dude, there let's go, go. to Baker Street. Baker Street. I was like, oh, well, all right. And I kind of looked over to the old girl. I was like, you're going to go occupy so Baker Street? So what are you going to do? She's like, oh, you know, I don't know. I'm just I think I'm tired. I think I'm going to go home. I was like, all right, well, would you like me to walk you to your car? She's like, yeah, sure. So I walk her to her car. You know, we talk a little bit and get to her car. Get, I get a hug. Okay, I get a hug. All right, I'm not not thrilled. Yeah, but it's better than just getting in her car and leaving. It's, I guess it's better than a handshake or a slap. Yes. So, so and then, that, that, that depends on the nature of the slap. So, yes, it kind of does. Yeah, it's better than a handshake, though. Um. So I get in my car, and I was like, you know what? I think I'll just go meet everybody down at Baker Street without her. I was talking, I mean, I was talking no. I was talking to everybody just as much as they was talking to me. So right. I was like, you know, go out there and do that. So I did that. I show up. I see Harris Kid, and you're just like, hey, dude, what's up? You know, we're just kind of waiting for people to show up. And who walks in two minutes later after I do? But, <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> and you just seen her face. And she saw me. Oh, my gosh. Oh! <laughs> Oh, I'm healed. Oh, I had, wow. she, she literally just comes up to me and gives me a hug. It's like, oh, I had a second wind. I was like, hmm, that drive to the highway is pretty extensive, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy how you really get a second wind like that. Change of mind. And then, yeah, we had, we had a table. We sat down, and she's sitting right next to me. I'm not sure if I said anything to her the rest of the night. <laughs> I had a hard time looking her in the eye after that. Let's just say that. Literally, I did. Oh, you still she had to hang out with her? What's up? What's that, Rich? You still had to hang out with her? I don't know. Part of me was like, I you know, have this girl. To. I didn't have to do anything. I could have been like, That's... hey, you know what? It's fine. <laughs> Closed. I should have been like, hey, you know what? It's fine. I'm just, I'm, I'm tired myself. You have fun. I don't know. Part of me was just kind of and like. And then come back in five minutes later and start hanging out with some other chick right in front of her. Oh, my God. I should have That's done that. That's what you do. should have just gone to the damn bar and been like. I am uh, really tired. I'm sorry. I've got I'm to really tired. you guys. Bartender, another round. <laughs> I'm really tired. I think I'm going to go to the bar. <laughs> oh my god they flipped the wow. table over Rich did you get us a very 70s pic of Toby Hera for, for the audience I did check this noise out let's, let, let's analyze this picture shall we oh there he is in, in all his glory I, I, I want to believe that that's a mullet I'm pretty sure that's a mullet that he's sporting there uh, actually you know what that looks like that looks like the, the hat with the trucker hair hanging out the side 
that you can get like at costume shops and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's generally they would sell it as a mullet, right? And then and, and is then that his son, got, a younger version of him in the lower corner? Does does the son also sport a molester <laughs> mustache? I don't know. It looks like a girl, dude. I know. Well, you know, he's got the same well, hairstyle so, of his so dad. So old man. Uh, ooh, I don't know. That stash looks pretty gnarly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Might might be tough to get into the women's locker room with a stash like that. So Toby Hera, Rangers great. Nice. Yeah, man. How, how pathetic is our franchise? The, the, that's a Rangers great right hey, there. Hey, we're working on that as we speak, sir. Here we are. So, um... Let's see what else. I told you my really horrible story. Which is what else did we promise the folks? College football, everyone. Um before we close, we're we're gonna have a quick discussion of every exciting bowl game. So we'll see you next time on the half ass sports cast. What? <laughs> You're not gonna plug your show? Oh yes, uh, yeah, no, he's right. I, let me do the exit here. All right. All right, all right. All right. I'm all effing right. this cat. You're just right. holding the I'm tail. Sorry. All right. <laughs> no, okay. As uh, sorry, Rich, I hit the hit the mic. I just wanted to do the joke about there not being any exciting bowl games this year. Yeah, we, we oh, fell on it. I get you here. It was it was really funny. I was about to say I was about to make a joke, but I would have overlapped your joke and it would yeah. have made it double unfunny. My joke was really funny. Mm-hmm. Totally. So tune in on Monday, January second, <laughs> for the Bruin Bowl. We're going to be broadcasting all day. Ryan's going to be chiming in with some cool sports facts. We might get a we, we, we might get an update on some exciting family news from the horror house. <laughs> yes. Which, oh, the, there might be a new horror in the house. We've got a little yeah. trip on the way. Uh-oh. Yeah. Okay, now, Bono, I'm unexperienced. I do not know what is this Bruin Brawl, Bruin Brawl you speak of. I'm glad that you asked because it's oh, actually okay. called Bruin Bowl. That's awesome. And and what it is, is this is an annual tradition. This is actually how the uh, You Can't Breathe It on Television show got started was we we go out every year on New Year's. Or, or this year it's actually on January 2nd because whenever New Year's falls on a Sunday, they always push all the bowls till Monday. Yeah. So they, they, they don't want to compete with the NFL. No, they don't want to. They don't want to do that. Yeah. So, so Monday, January second, we're going to start early in the morning. We're going to brew a beer. We're going to eat good food. We're going to watch good football games. Last year, we were treated to the TCU Wisconsin game, Hell, which was just an yeah. all timer. And, and the one, the one bowl game I am remotely interested in this season, other than of course the Cougars, um, OU's impending loss to Iowa on Friday night. OSU is uh, yes, o- Oklahoma State and Stanford. The closer. I th- I think that's going to be a really, really neat ball game. It's uh, the the first team to sixty five is going to win that game. Yeah, it is a little bit more exciting uh, bowl lineup this year. Uh, I saw the lineup earlier today, and I was actually kind of interested in it. I was kind of interested in the first game, the the Houston game. The, the Houston, uh, they are playing Penn State. Penn State. Yeah, that is kind of an interesting let me, let me ball you, game. Let me give you. Let me give you a, a quick synopsis of how that game is going to go. Houston will score and a score lot. and score, and Penn State will molest children mm. too soon. Too soon. Too soon. They're going to hit right. the showers early. Let's just say that. <laughs> With all right, that's all right. Too soon. wow. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And so, yeah, <laughs> for this very special day, we're go- it's going to be kind of a special thing for us. We're going to do a duo cast. So. Uh, well, uh, Kyle and Bono are brewing beers that they, the beer that they've talked about, the alt beer they've talked about doing all season long on their show. Ryan's going to cut in intermittently when the uh, brewing action is just pretty much guys standing around the pot. He's going to cut in and talk sports, grab somebody's side and, uh, go over the sports topic of the day. So we're, we're going to get some updates on bowl games. We're going to get some updates on any bad dates Ryan has between now and then. <laughs> If we have oh, time, I mean, because it's only it's, a four-hour show, so yeah, it is actually. Yeah, you know, I can I can pull some out of the hat, some oldies, <laughs> some golden oldies. I, I think we should. I think we should have a bad date episode, or where, where that should be like the next combined. A bad. We, we, we this show is a bad during date. The national championship, not watch party. Well, let's, let's have a bad date roundtable. Yeah, the the bad date roundtable. Well, <laughs> write that down, Rich. If you or any of your friends would like to go on a bad date with Ryan for the show, <laughs> write us here at the Lone Star, care of the White House. Yes. Nice. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, I think we've done everything we could here today. Um, you know, Tune in next time. We're going to be talking a little bit more NFL, a little bit more NBA, and uh, wrap up the bowl season. I mean, it never seems like we have enough time in our shows, but uh, we're going to try to fit it in there. 
Yeah, so so next episode is is next Wednesday, so you'll you'll just be actually you should you should maybe preview the national championship game because that'll be the following Monday. That's true. If I yeah. preview that, preview all the good uh, holiday bowl action. Um, we'll have a good grip on where the NBA is, and definitely a good picture and wrap up of the NFL regular season going into the playoffs. So, uh, for the quarter of the ass, uh, that is me, Ryan, and for my other friend Mark, who's not here. And on behalf of Bono, thanks Who's for watching. Just an ass. Yeah, just a these are entire ass. Actually, we're actually one and one quarter ass. Yeah, one and cool. one quarter ass. <laughs> thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Cheers, buddy. Oops. <laughs>